Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmommy.wordpress.com. Once again, I wanted to thank you for being a Patreon patron for me, and I am happy to bring you your exclusive video for this month. Now, if you look at homeschool moms across the board, one thing that most of them have in common is a love of books. But one of the questions that I actually get asked most often is where do I come up with the list of books that I am going to recommend for my kids to read? So I thought that I would share that with you today. Now, first of all, I have to reiterate the, the fact that I think it is so important that you do let your kids have a say in books that they are going to read. But I also understand that there are a lot of times that you do want to tie books in with the theme of what they're learning about. So I'm just going to give you some ideas on where I get those book titles. And it's for me, it's not just like one place or two places. I have a whole array of choices, of, of places to look at when I'm trying to find good books for my kids to read. So I'm just gonna share some of those with you today. So one of the first places that I look for book selections and recommended books are at Bookshark Sunlight and Beautiful Feet Books. You can either check on their website or you can actually order their catalogs. Even if you don't use their curriculum, they will still send you a free catalog. And I actually do get the catalog from both Bookshark and Sunlight, specifically because I love their book list so much. Now the one thing that Bookshark, Sunlight, and Beautiful Feet Books all have in common is that they are all literature-based curriculums. So of course, they are going to be a perfect place to find great books for your children, great living books that are going to be engaging and there are a lot of classics involved. And I just, I found that for us, that is the first place that we go because practically every book that we've tried so far from one of their lists is just, it's a winner. Now another place that you can go actually are websites. For example, Ambleside Online, if you have ever heard of that, that is actually a free website where it's Charlotte Mason type learning and they will actually give you a schedule for children throughout all the grades, I believe, um, for all of the subjects. And again, it is literature based because it is based on the Charlotte Mason method of learning. Now I do not use only Ambleside online as our as our schedule. I prefer to just kind of pull things from different areas. But one of the things that I do turn to Ambleside for a lot again are those book lists. They have just wonderful books that, you know, that they have listed under English and listed under science and listed under history for art. Just wonderful, wonderful selections for you to choose from for your kids. So I really highly recommend that you check out Ambleside online also for book recommendations. Besides that, my son just knocked over my light. Besides that, there are blogs. You know, there are blogs galore for, for finding book lists for your kids. And a lot of blogs will actually offer themed book lists. For example, they might offer book lists for middle school boys middle school boys or they might offer book lists for fall they might offer book lists for preschool age um, book lists maybe for learning about animals or learning about Thanksgiving and actually that is some exciting news that I have to throw into you is that starting November 1st all of my patreon patrons are going to start getting um, a monthly book list from me. I am going to go with that aspect. I'm going to do the themed book list for all of you and starting November 1st I'm going to give you a different themed book list every month with your rewards. So that's just something new that I started so I'm really looking forward to doing that because there are so many different themes to go with and I love books and yeah I'm just really looking forward to getting them all together for you. Um, another great place is Goodreads. Now I know that a lot of plate a lot of people use Goodreads and a lot of people ask me if I have a Goodreads account. You would think that I would as much as I love books but honestly for me it's just kind of one more thing to do and I'm not saying that it's a bad website or a bad program app 
whatever you want to call it but um, it's just something that I don't particularly do but I know that a lot of times I will turn to Goodreads to find books for specific themes and actually it was my librarians who I'm going to be talking about next librarians were the ones who actually turned me on to that to to checking out Goodreads to find good books so yeah we're going to segue into librarians your local librarians are literally surrounded by books every single day and obviously they love books or they would not have that job so librarians are a fantastic resource for you as a homeschooling parent to go to and ask them if they know of any good books for specific subjects specific time periods specific genres anything i remember there for a while my my daughter who's 16 now i think it was two years ago she went through a period where she was really 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 interested in learning about the salem witch the salem witch trials she was just really interested in learning about that and it was our librarian who was just recommending book after book after book for her and that was actually how we came across the dear america series which is is phenomenal you know in all of the all of the topics that dear that the dear america series covers is just fantastic so again then we turned to them when my daughter she went through another period where i have to say that my daughter she's just one of those kids that you know when she gets interested in a topic she's just just a very one track mind she focuses on that one area and more she more or less becomes an expert in that one area because she spends so much time learning about it so when she was learning about World War II, again, I went to the librarian and I was asking them for good World War, World War II themed books. And so she was the one who turned me on to, of course, the Diary of Anne Frank, which I did know about that. But she also told me about Number the Stars and she told me about The Book Thief. And there were several others that my daughter actually ended up reading at the recommendation of the librarian. So do not discount your librarians. They, they really are so knowledgeable about this area. Sticking with the library, I would also recommend that you actually check the reference section in your children's section um, because you know that the reference section, those are not actually books that you can take home with you. Typically, they're books, you know, like um, atlases or encyclopedias, dictionaries, books that you can use while, they, while you are at the library, but they're not things that are out for circulation. And in the children's section, the children's reference section of our library, they actually have a phenomenal book. It's about this thick, and it has his, um, recommended historical fiction books for specific time periods. So if you have a certain time period that you want your children to learn about or that your children are learning about, what you do is you actually go in that reference book, you find that time period, and it will give you an entire list of books to read. And it also actually um, marks it off into, I don't remember if they go by age or by grade level, but it, it definitely marks it into levels so that you can see what things might be more appropriate for your kids and what things might not be. Now those things, those just because they're in that reference book doesn't automatically mean that your library is going to have that book. So I found that the hard way. But what I actually started doing was just, I would take the book over to the computer in the library and I would type in the title right from the reference book and I would search it at the library to see if our library had it. And there were actually an, some that I actually was interested in enough that I searched them on Amazon to actually purchase them later. So that is another idea. Find out if you have any books like that. They're they're just they're phenomenal. They're a phenomenal help. Um also, I just want to remind you use your friends as a reference, especially homeschooling friends. A lot of times they can tell you what books have really engaged their kids, what books that their kids maybe didn't find so good, what books were good for certain areas. So your friends who are homeschooling especially, they know, you know, they've been there, especially if they're older than you and have kind of kids who are older than you, they, they can give you great recommendations that you might not otherwise have thought of. And the last recommendation that I'm going to give to you on places to look is yourself. Think back to the books that you loved as a child. You know, when I was a kid, I loved A Wrinkle in Time. I loved Animal Farm when I was in high school. I loved the book Little Women. In fact, I read Little Women in sixth grade and that became my favorite book up until I found A Wrinkle in Time. 
So all of these books are books that I made sure to share with my kids because not only was I able to reread them and relive those moments from my childhood, but my kids were able to enjoy that and we were able to make that connection. Um, just reading about the same thing and they could tell that I was visually excited about, about doing it with them. So anyway, I hope that these suggestions are helpful to you. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, you can leave one down below. Again, I just want to thank you so much for your support, and I hope you have a great day.